Hey everybody, this is Dave Taylor with the Dino Realty, and today on House Hike, we're going to talk about earnest money. What is it? How does it work? And how much you should put down? Stick with me until the end, and I'll show you a simple trick for being able to calculate it every time. <laughs> So one of my very first clients as a realtor was this couple and it was their very first time buying a house. And so we went through the entire author and as we got to the earnest money part, they asked me how much should they put down? And honestly, I wasn't sure. I kind of had this like wishy-washy answer where I was like, you could do this or you could do that. It was brutal. It really was bad. Definitely not a good realtor confident answer. But you know what? I'm thankful for that moment. Because of that moment, I actually went and did a ton of research on earnest money and what it is and how it actually works and how it can actually really benefit you during the offer process. So here's what I learned. Earnest money is like your skin in the game. It's money that you, as the buyer, with your offer, you go to Mr. or Mrs. Seller and say, here you go, Mr. or Mrs. Seller. I like your house so much, I want you to hold on to this money just in case. If something goes wrong and you decide to leave for no reason whatsoever, well, the seller gets to keep that. But if everything goes right, well, then that money goes towards your closing costs. There's also another scenario. Something goes wrong, but we've already protected you with a contingency, whether it's an inspection contingency or a financing contingency or some other type of contingency. As long as you've got your contingency covered, you're going to get your money back, okay? So make sure you're working with the right realtor so that we get that taken care of for you. Now I mentioned that there's three different scenarios with earnest money. One, everything goes perfectly. That earnest money goes towards your closing costs. Two something doesn't go right and we have a contingency to protect you and you get your earnest money back and then of course scenario three is you decide hey this isn't the right house for you and you go get another house well the seller gets to keep the earnest money in that case but there's also two different timings with the earnest money you can actually have it where you put in earnest money with the offer so at the exact same time you hand in the offer you hand in a check for some earnest money or, which is my preference, you actually turn it in five days after they accept your offer. If they don't accept your offer, well, then you don't have to turn in any earnest money. But if they do accept your offer, then you got five days to turn it in. Now, how does that work? Well, typically, you're gonna actually go get a cashier's check from the bank and send it into the listing brokerage. Or, if you're working with me, you could actually end up using what's called trust funds and we can just wire the money directly. I love using trust funds. It makes it so much easier. So the big question is, how much money should you put down in your earnest money? There is no set rule for how much earnest money you should put down. But here's a trick that I like to use. Think about the 1% rule, okay? If you are buying a house for $100,000, then your earnest money really should be about $1,000. It's easy math, right? $150,000, $1,500. $200,000 house, $2,000. Keep it simple. That's usually a pretty good tactic. Make sure to comment below on your earnest money tips and tricks and your horror stories. I wanna hear them. Also, make sure to like and subscribe and make sure to click the link below for your free buyer or seller's guide. Hey, until next time, Thanks for watching.